Hey, we're on. Hey guys, I'm going to show you what I've been working on for the last couple months. Trying to add a transmission controller into an MS3 box. Um, quick overview. See if you guys can see this. There we go. Why is everything look inverted? I'll have to check that out. Figure out why this looks backwards. But um, so basically, I have an MS3 box here with a gem stem and expansion harness. Um, tack output is on tack out. I'm running that to nitrous in for a vehicle speed. So the idea is as I increase the RPM on the gym stem, I'll actually get a mile per hour feedback for VSS1. So just real quick on the dry race board, the idea is mega score three box, the gym stem on the bottom, and then the expansion harness coming out and going over tack out connected to nitrous one in for VSS. And then just got some speed calculations to make it easy to figure out what your slope should look like. So the whole transmission controller is based on uh, mile per hour as an input against a throttle position threshold. So the idea is at 0% throttle, 8 miles an hour, you should get a 1-2 shift. And say wide open at 6,000 RPM gives you say 35 miles an hour. So 100% throttle. And mega squirt stuff, everything's an integer, so there's no floats. So 1,000 would be 100%. Um, say 551 would be 55.1%. So you're going to end up with a slope with a Y intercept for 1, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 4 shift. Um, there's also down shift thresholds and torque converter lockup thresholds. So we'll go over some of that in Tuner Studio. So let me go ahead and fire this guy up. All right, so Tuner Studio. So I made in the gauges, I've made a section where you have vehicle speed, gear select, uh, upshift threshold, downshift threshold, torque over to lockup threshold, and you got your throttle position, engine speed. So we're really only concerned with. Um, Downshift, upshift, torque converter lockup, and then our vehicle speed. And then we can see the gear as, return, as, a, as an output. So under basic load settings, I added transmission. So I had to create all this within the INI file. Let's see if we can get in here a little better. There we go. Something like that. All right, so at the top we have an on-off. Turns everything on or off. Right now we have um, 4L8E, 4L70W uses the same shift pattern. If we want to do a 4L60 or an E4OD, we can do that. Um, I need to add the third shift solenoid for coast and whatever else they use it for. Um, that'll be down the road. Um, so right now you can assign um, your shift solenoids, nitrous one, nitrous two. Those just happen to be handy. And I'll show you how I have those wired up to the gym stem so we can see the LEDs turn off to make sure the outputs are working. Uh, torque converter lockup, I have on the main board injector 2. EPC, I'm still trying to sort that out. That's not quite working at the moment, but I have a workaround for that. And I'm going to try um, a different code uh, example and see if I can get that to work right. So the idea is you can pick the frequency you want the EPC to work at along with... Um, you can pick what you use to calculate the line pressure. So I have an option for manifold pressure. So you could set your min and max line pressure or manifold pressure and it will scale your outputs accordingly. So then down here you have these are all just an 8-bit value between 0 and 255. The idea is 255 should be max line pressure if I invert the EPC output because the idea with the EPC solenoids is 0% current is going to yield you max line pressure and 100% current is going to yield you uh, minimum line pressure. So we either have to invert the numbers here or I can physically invert it when I set the output. So I'm still sorting that out and I'm going to have to do some testing on that. But um, it seems to be working so far. 
So the idea is you can adjust your minimum duty at 0% throttle or your minimum map pressure. So the reason I did this is for boosted cars. It doesn't take 100% throttle to get to 100% boost. Generally only takes, in my case, I'm in boost at 30, 40% throttle and can creep up to five, six, seven pounds, even at less than half throttle. So I would kind of want higher line pressure based on boost because that's going to be more indication of output torque of the engine not so much throttle position so it was just an idea i threw it in there and it seems to be working um i can suck and blow on the map line and i can get an epc change in the gauge when i have that gauge up so it's just some idea i was playing with so that seems to be working so on the right we have the actual upshift thresholds so minimum speed for a 1-2 maximum speed for a 1-2 minimum for 2-3 2-3 max 3-4 min 3-4 max and the same thing with torque converter lockup you can say hey usually it's going to be some number halfway between uh, your minimum 2-3 and your minimum 1-2 two, two. so about 12 same with the torque converter lockup if you want it to lock halfway through second you'll go ahead and uh, pick a number halfway between say 35 and 70 I pick 60 could probably be like 55 but that will all be based on what you want the car to do and so forth goes all the way up to fourth gear downshift generally these values will be about 30 percent less than your upshift value because you don't want to downshift into an upshift condition so the where the transmissions banging between two different gears um, because you're going too fast for the gear below it and too slow for the gear above it. So that'll take a little bit of tweaking on what you feel that should be like. Um, I added the idea of adding a fifth gear um, for some nag ones, but I'm not quite sure I'm ready to tackle that yet. But um, that'll be down the road. So we're going to start off with the mile per hours on that bottom right. We're going to go ahead and creep that up. So five miles an hour, you can see our upshift threshold is at minus 8.3. So we're going to increase the throttle just a little bit like if we were driving. Oh, there we go. Increase the throttle like we were driving. And then we're going to go ahead and creep the mile per hour up. So we just got past the threshold for an upshift, which banged us into second gear. Our shift solenoids down here are both off, so that indicates second gear for a 4R and a 4L80. So now our upshift threshold is at minus 5. So now we got to a torque converter on because the threshold is 6%. We're at 5.4, so we're less than the thresholds for the torque converter lockup turned on, like we'd expect. There we go. And then as we go ahead and we increase the speed, the upshift threshold went above 5.4 into 5.6, so that bringing us into third. Second solenoid is turned on, which is what we'd expect. So we'll go ahead and increase our torque converter lockup threshold is at 1.5, 6, 7. Now we've got torque converter lockup. We're at 24 miles an hour, 5%. That's about what I normally see in the wagon. Should try to get a bipod for this. So we increase our speed. Um, upshift threshold is at minus seven, minus three, minus zero, three, six, seven. So now we're into fourth, 40 miles an hour. Um, torque converter lockup also came on. Both shift solenoids are on. Um, I can see the outputs PT5 and 4. Those happen to be nitrous 1 and nitrous 2. So I can see that. Megascore is recording that's driving the output pins along with what I'm calculating what the output pins should be So that seems to be working good and then on downshifts. So if we maintain that speed, but we crank in the throttle So my downshift threshold 17.8 so throttle position needs to get above 17.8 Right around now commands a downshift. So new downshift threshold is 45% because we're still only doing 40 miles an hour in third. If I crank this up to 45, boom, downshift in second. Torque converter lockups 57.9, so the TCC came right back on like you'd expect. 
and then we go ahead and we keep creeping throttle up bam we can oh I'm turning the wrong one creaking up on speed <laughs> there we go back into second and then I can lower the throttle position just a tad and get the TCC to come back on there's TCC on so I have a threshold of 5% like a hysteresis to make it turn on and then you got to fall back below the threshold to make it turn off or on off so that should be pretty nice and then if you crank the throttle down bang back up into fourth and then as you're deselling all power falls all the way down to zero and engines off all right so on the gym stem see if we can see that there uh, let's see here these two green wires happen to be nitrous whoop, nitrous one nitrous two and we have one LED on right there which happens to be SS1 so it means we're in we are in first gear so let me bump the throttle up a little bit go ahead and cr start cranking the speed that's the speed so second gear should both be off like they are third gear torque converter lock fourth gear torque converter lock stayed on I need to work that bug out there should have been a delay between the two on here. Oh, I'm leaning on something all right there we go I was kind of leaning on the speed line there but that seems to be how that's working so yeah so far so good hopefully in March I can mount this in the car possibly just bypass my existing tranny controller and just do the ms2 driving the engine and then the ms3 running the tranny and then when i'm happy with that i'll just go ahead and swap over all the fuel and spark and we'll go from there thanks